This is the 2024 Genesis G70. And if you are BMW, Audi, or Mercedes-Benz, you're shaking in your boots because this vehicle right here, which has actually been out since 2017, but for this 2024 model, now has a 3.5 liter turbocharged engine under the hood, makes this one of the most fun, one of the fastest, packed with luxury performance sedans you can buy on the market today. Oh, and by the way, its starting price beats all of them. Hey, let's get in and check out the 2024 Genesis, not Hyundai, G70. So as many of you know, Genesis started as a brand in 2015 after it spun off from Hyundai when they had their original sedan in the market called the Hyundai Genesis. In 2017, they introduced this vehicle right here in Seoul, South Korea at their Olympic Park. And it was a testament to the brand moving from being just a standard Hyundai pedestrian vehicle to its own standalone luxury performance brand with its first real performance sedan coming, in, coming to the market. So what makes this sedan so different? Well, it actually goes deeper than just Hyundai and the brand Genesis. It starts with Peter Schreier, who was the designer of this vehicle. Who is he? Well, he is one of the most well-known designers in the auto industry and was actually the person behind the highly popular Kia Stinger. And if there's one thing you know when you look at the Kia Stinger and you look at this Genesis G70, is that there are a lot of similarities between this Genesis vehicle and a BMW 3 Series and 5 Series. You can see that DNA because, of course, Peter Schreier came from BMW. So when you look at this, you can see that DNA in the vehicle. All right, so let's get in and let's talk about the actual design. And we'll start with the front of the vehicle up here. You're going to see a big, bold Genesis design up front right here. You've got this beautiful front grille up on front, and you can see all the technology packed under here with your camera, and then you make your way down to the bottom. You've got a spoiler, but it actually serves as ventilation as well for the vehicle, and you've got LED lights stacked one over top of the other, just like the GV80 uh, on the side of the vehicle, and then down below, more venting with radar sensors across the front of the vehicle. So when you get under the hood of a vehicle, the first thing you look at it is the engine. But in the case of this G70, it's not the first thing that I see that screams performance. It's actually these two cross member bars here that are meant to provide more rigidity under the hood. It just means that this vehicle has more of a performance featuring foundation, if you will. And you're going to notice this kind of fitting or fitment all the way throughout the vehicle uh, because this vehicle is meant to be pushed hard, not on just the street, but on the track. Under the hood, you've got this. 3.3 liter twin turbo charge V6 is pushing out 371 horsepower and it's made it with an eight speed transmission. It's an automatic transmission. But what I really like the most about it is that you not only have a sport option inside when you go through your electronically controlled driving characteristics, but you have something called sport plus. It takes traction control off. And when you hammer the wheel on this thing, it absolutely takes off. There is no question this vehicle from a performance standpoint should be put in the same class as BMW, Audi, and Mercedes. This thing is all about performance and its DNA, although it's a luxury sedan, starts right here under the hood. And outside of the 3.3 liter twin turbocharged engine, you're also gonna have the option for a 2.5 liter engine as well. Um, all wheel drive and rear wheel drive will also be optioned with this vehicle. All right, and so the final number you wanna know is what's the zero to 60, right? You're gonna be hovering with the 3.3 liter and of course the all wheel drive and the rear wheel drive, you're gonna be hovering somewhere between 4.3 and 4.5. I've even seen numbers between 4.3 and 4.9. If you think about it, I mean, we're talking less than a second difference, so it's negligible. But if you look at supercars in the market that are hitting 2.9, 3, 3.2, you're talking a one second difference with this vehicle right here. That is incredible for a four door sedan from a company called Genesis. That's what makes it different. The first thing that consumers do when they buy a new vehicle is they go to the automotive aftermarket and they get different wheels and tires. But not in the case of this G70. There's no freaking reason to change out this wheel packaging because, frankly, they look awesome. And we said the same thing about the GV80 as well. They've done a great job from a design standpoint of bringing you customized wheels 
or customized looking wheels from the factory. So these are 19s right here and they're running on Michelin tires. Um, so when you think about performance, they didn't spare in any capacity. And then of course, behind the custom wheel, you've got these beautiful uh, customized Genesis uh, Brembo brakes, great stopping power. So when you're out there pushing it hard on the track, you know you're gonna have that, that comfort, that, that assurance that this vehicle is gonna stop with precision. And the official color of the G70 is actually called Cyber Truck Gray. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, obviously, um, this has got a very special color. And for most vehicles that you see like this driving down the road, the first thing you're gonna think of is that this is a wrap. This is not a wrap. This is called Bond Silver, like James Bond Silver. Really beautiful color. And then I just wanna kinda of give you guys a full look down the side of this vehicle. You've heard me use the words before when describing German vehicles as Teutonic. Um, this vehicle has a very specific look to it. And what I mean by that is not only do you have this beautiful color, but everything is color matched. Your mirror is color matched. Come all the way down the side, the only exterior color that doesn't match the actual body and, and look itself is actually your B pillar right here. Gray all the way down, no silver, nothing, no chrome, with the exception of just a mild muted chrome around, it's almost, almost got a brush nickel look around your window sills. And I wanted to spin around with the front tire so that I could actually articulate two different things that they've actually gone with staggered wheels and tires. So you're running the Michelins, but if you look right here, you're running a 225-40 R19. So you've got a 19 on front and a 19 on rear, but on the back, you're running 255s and that's really important. So when you look up here, you got 255s and these are 35 R19s. So you've got a much bigger and bolder, meaning larger patch that you're contacting the concrete or pavement with, with the rear tire. Again, giving this thing incredible gripping power when you're out there cornering on a track. All right, so the back of the vehicle is incredibly clean and you're not gonna see a lot of extra foo-foo stuff. Like there's no spoiler on the rear. Um, they've integrated in just this mild uh, slope that just kind of smoothly rolls up. That's gonna help provide better aerodynamics when the wind or when the air comes over the top, it's gonna hit this. It's gonna force the back of the vehicle down just that much to keep it firmly planted. And then as you make your way along the back, you've got the LED lights here that wrap around. They kind of marry the front as well. You've got the double reds, just like you have the double LEDs up front, you have them here. And then everything again, monochromatic into the back of the vehicle with the G70 logo, beautiful Genesis design right here, telling you immediately it's the 3.3 liter twin turbocharged engine. And this one right here is all wheel drive. And as you make your way down to the bottom, they give you a little bit different look. I kind of stand back and as I look at it, it's got that muted black, but you've got quad exhaust and instead of pushing the exhaust out, they kind of pushed it under uh, the rear bumper just to kind of make it a little bit more luxurious, right? You're, you're, you're muting that back. Although if you didn't know any better, you go, man, those are massive exhaust pipes on the rear. But if you look low enough, you can see the two uh, exhaust pipes under uh, and tucked away, just giving it a little bit more of a performance stance. So as we think about kind of cargo space, they've actually given you probably more than I thought would think originally, just with how much room you have back here for a couple different suitcases. And they did that, and at the same time, they did that to minimize how much second row seating uh, you're gonna have. It's almost like a Ford Mustang. They put the seats in the back to kind of make you feel like you have room, but let's just face it, ain't nobody sitting in the back of this vehicle. All right, so I'm gonna go from left to right on the interior of the vehicle. And I wanna start with the steering wheel, nicely appointed right here in front of you, Genesis logo in the middle, double stitching. Again, it's all about creating that luxury feel on the inside of this vehicle. And of course, all your navigational and clickable buttons right here on the steering wheel from volume uh, adjustment to your lane departure warning, your adaptive cruise control, all those are contained right here. And I love how the double stitching actually falls in line all the way around the steering wheel as well. As I make my way to the left of the car, there's a lot to really talk about over here um, from a luxurious and beautification standpoint. Quilted leather engineered into the side of your driver's door. I love this again with double stitching. And then you're going with this beautiful brushed aluminum look here for all of your buttons, uh, obviously giving you full control of your driver and your second row passenger um, uh, buttons as well for your windows. 
And then up here, you can do your set controls for driver one and driver two with a little tweeter up top, another tweeter down below, uh, and then you've got another speaker down here at your footboard. So uh, really cool setup with the driver's side door. Again, elegance and luxury on the inside of this vehicle. Uh, as my I make my way up onto the center console, there are going to be some things I point out that I like and some things that I point out that I don't really like. So uh, first off, you've got a digital gauge cluster up here on the front right. Um, and then we'll bring it in. You've got a digital gauge cluster up here on the front right, so you can see it right here. And then on the left side, it's actually uh, more of an antiquated old school look of an actual speedometer there on the left. You can actually see that speedometer is going to spool up. And I think that's kind of cool, again, reinforcing the mindset of having a performance-based vehicle. What I want to point out that I really don't like is actually right here in front of me. For this vehicle, I expected something more like the GV80 from the standpoint of your touchscreen. What I also don't like is how far I have to reach. So if I'm driving here, I actually can get my arm to here, remember, six foot three, and then I have to lean forward. So I found myself grabbing this while driving, trying to push buttons, and I, I don't I don't really like how far away it is from me. Uh, and I think that's an adjustment they can make. As you make your way down here through your center stack, you're gonna find USB uh, charging down here. You've got in wireless induction in this little uh, alcove. And then you've got your uh, music, uh, your just clickable buttons up here, whether you want your radio, you want to set up the vehicle, your navigation, maps, etc., are all uh, set right here in the middle. And then as you make your way down, uh, this is where the music happens. And what I mean by music is this button right here. This is where you get to control your various drive modes. And as noted earlier, that drive plus mode is one of my favorite features with this vehicle. You not only get sport, but you get sport plus. And that is really cool. And then we start talking cup holders. And as we make our way across the dash, I just wanted to point out the double stitching that makes its way across the dash as well. So I wanted to save the seats for last. Um, when we were test driving the GV80, I couldn't help but talk about how comfortable and how perfect the seats were in that vehicle. And it's kind of the same thing with this G70. They've carried over a lot of the DNA. And these seats are just amazing. They're heated. Uh, they have the cooling feature. And again, they have the button here on the side if you haven't seen this before. I love this. As a driver, you have the ability to move the seat forward and back. Uh, for somebody that might be getting in that second row, and you can do it all from this side of the seat, uh, which I think is really, really cool. If you look up top, you've got a small little uh, sun slash moon roof here as well, so you can just pop this open, give yourself a little bit of air, again, keeping a lot of torsional rigidity by not making it a full moon roof, um, but you do get extra weight with this, so if you really wanted to reduce weight, you'd remove this, but again, luxury vehicle with this faux suede uh, that really runs the whole roof line very cool and very luxurious on the interior so we wanted to take it to the next level and actually drive home the whole seating arrangement on the inside of the g70 just so that if if you are interested in this vehicle it's giving you a, a much more realistic look so this seats obviously of course all the way forward so let me just go ahead and push it back to where i would be at least comfortable driving you know somewhere i i think i could get away with this right here for a long drive, probably not. I'd want it back a little bit more, but let's just go with this right here. If we're going to go to the supermarket or whatnot, um, or you know, maybe a 30-minute drive, this is doable for me. I could go more forward. Let's just push it a little bit more. It's starting to get a little bit more uncomfortable. This would be about, I think this is probably the maximum distance that I could go. Because if I went any further, look at this. I'm, my left knee is actually pushing in here because the the console will slope a little bit more towards me. So we're going to go right about there. Now let's go to the second row and see if, and that remember, that's almost all the way forward. Let's just see what happens if I try to get in the back now. So you've got the cutout slots that I, I can't get my shoe in. There we go. All right. So this chair is up against my knees. Um, if I wanted to go back even further, like there's nowhere for me to go. I could lock my feet in. So now my feet are totally locked in. I can't like, I like locked in. You can come in and look. It's kind of funny to see they're locked in, but there's no real functional room for me. So if I wanted to be comfortable back here, let's just see as six, six foot three right there, that would be comfortable for a drive. Now if we go back to the front. We're just playing around with this. Let's just see what it's like for me now in the front. 
Knees are against the dash. Got a lot of room in that second row, baby. But then again, don't really need it. Giddy like a kid, that 3.3 liter twin turbocharged V6 under the hood, uh, in Sport Plus mode is a ton of fun. I find, I found that test driving this vehicle, the minute I get in, I flip it over to Sport Plus because I want to feel the vehicle every time I'm driving it. I want to feel like I'm in more of a performance vehicle than just a regular old sedan. So you feel that when you're behind the wheel. All right, so one thing to know about the automatic transmission with the paddle shifters here up on top is that these paddle shifters, when you want to play with the manual mode, uh, it will hold it in gear until just before redline, and then it will automatically shift to the next gear for you, thus protecting your motor uh, from really hitting that tack at redline and creating any type of an issue. Uh, so I like that feature. You have enough bandwidth um, in there to play around with the manual uh, with the paddle shifters, which I think is cool. Uh, steering wheel appointment. I always think about steering wheel appointment, being able to get my wrists up here from my perfect driving position, and you can with this vehicle. I think that's fantastic. And again, this just, now that I'm in perfect seating position, highlights how far away this entertainment system is. I literally have to lean, grab the steering wheel, pull myself forward and lean up to get to this guy up here. I think they could do a much better job with this. And I promise I'm not trying to knock the infotainment system on this, but I have one more little hiccup. And that is your Apple CarPlay. I couldn't get to connect wirelessly. Uh, the only way I could get Apple CarPlay to connect was by using my USB connector uh, with my mobile phone. And just something to point out, uh, kind of as a functionality standpoint. So up here in your little center console, you have wireless induction charging, the 12 volt, you have standard USB. I almost wanted to slide and say USB-C because I'm so used to saying that you don't, but if you do want it, it's right here. All right, so let's close it out with the 2024 Genesis G70 and um, we'll kind of review and go back some of the things that we talked about. Starting with the performance. This thing is just all out amazing. So if you are BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, Lincoln, it don't matter. If you're a luxury company and you're trying to compete in the market, this is gonna be setting the next new gold standard. These cars are absolutely amazing. That 3.3 liter turbocharged V6 in that Sport Plus mode is just way more performance than I expected this vehicle to have. Again, my two drawbacks is gonna be that second row seating and the infotainment center. I think the infotainment center needs to be upgraded a little bit bigger, go ULED, OLED, just something a little bit more modern except for what's in there right now. And then that second row seating, you gotta either slide it forward or move this sucker back try and create a little bit more space on the inside. Price, $41,500 starting price makes it incredibly affordable. And uh, your closeout price on this one, price is tested top of the line is $52,050. So you get a lot. It's available right now in dealerships nationwide. Uh, so if you want to get your hands on one, and by the way, this silver gray, bond gray is just freaking amazing. Um, I feel pretty cool driving. And if I was in the market for a luxury sedan, I'd buy it. This will go in my garage right next to my Audi A7. Just kidding. Um, love it. All right. If you guys love this video, drop your comments below. If you've owned one of these or a Kia Stinger, drop your comments below. And if you're not following me on your, my other social channels, please do. At It's Mike Caudill on Instagram, Facebook, and the old TikTok. And that's it for me with the 2024 Genesis G70. Hope you guys like this video.